Today's question is which harsh truth do you prefer to ignore? I am not happy because I choose not to be. I am the biggest obstacle to my own happiness. That is the biggest truth that I like to hide, that I like to tuck way deep down. I know what will make me happy. Like I have almost a perfect recipe, play by play, step one, step two, and so on that I know will equate to my happiness. Not off the wall excitement. Not uh, just overwhelming sensation happiness, but just peaceful contentedness, which I think is probably more what I should be striving for. I know what will get me that because I've dabbled in it before and I still dabble in it um, in living that kind of a life and being that way. But I've only had very little brief glimpses at it because I actively choose to do a lot of things that take me off of that path. There are distincts, there's a distinct set of activities that I know are way more conducive to me having a positive mindset and I, I actively choose not to do things that will bring it to me, and I actively choose to do things that I know take me farther away from that. Some examples of things that I could be doing more of is exercise, which I'm working on right now, uh, meditation, journaling. Um, these videos are a big one, so... Hey, I'm doing, the thing is at any given time, I'm at least doing like one of those things, but there's a whole stockpile of them and it just feels like, I think it was said in the King of the Hill, the, the show King of the Hill, uh, Boomhauer says something like life's like a dang old Rubik's cube. You know, you fix one side and another side just gets messed up. It's exactly like that. I can be really good at like, it feels like one, maybe two or three aspects of my life at a given time, but I try to push it beyond that and it just kind of crumbles. Yeah, um, I know what activities will bring me happiness and for some reason it's just hard to do all of them consistently. I mean, not for some reason, it's that you only have so much time in the day, but then hey, I actively spend hours doing crap that I know degrades my mental health. Scrolling on my phone, what they call doom scrolling. Da -da 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 doom scrolling. So much of that in my day. Um, I've eaten really bad today. I honestly have a stomach ache from how much sugar and other garbage food I've had today. Uh, I've been doing okay at that for a while, but you know, it only takes one day of letting it slide, and then that's another day, and it's another day, and it just gets worse for those few days. Uh, so tomorrow I'm hopefully going to jump off of that sugar wagon, but let's see. Let's see. Yeah, I just feel, but my body feels bad. I feel bad about myself. I know that it has literal physiological, like it affects your brain to have too much sugar and other garbage, but it also affects me mentally that I know that I am doing something that isn't good for me. And I don't, I'm not living up to the integrity that I've set for myself by consuming things that do not nourish me. Um, yeah, and I could, I could name some more things in both directions, but the point is, I know what's going to make me happy. And there's some power in just knowing that and being aware of that. You know, I've, I've heard it said that awareness can be, end up being a cure-all. Um, a very slow cure-all. But it's just, if you have awareness of every time that you're doing something that isn't in your best interest, that will be a natural guide toward getting you back onto the path of your best interest. Just is very, 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 very slow.
and I have come a long way in doing things that are conducive to a positive mindset. It's just that I could still be doing a heck of a lot more. And it's at these times when you realize that there is no quick fix. And, you know, you probably hear quick fix and think like tomorrow or in a week or in a month. I think in terms of long lasting change within yourself, if anybody's promising that, you know, you can do a complete 180 on your personality in two years, that's a quick fix. Like that's that's also scammy to hear that. <laughs> Even like five years in some way, you know. There are certain things, what they say, uh, you know, quitting smoking's easy. I've done it a thousand times. I don't smoke, and thank God I never picked up that stupid habit. It is by complete happenstance that, you know, I didn't end up getting addicted, addicted to cigarettes in high school. I just, I never liked that sensation when I was a kid. Um, yeah. I'm also aware of everything that my mind does that actively keeps me not happy, you know? Um, actively judging other people and just being dissatisfied with even the good things that come my way. Um, yeah, and I, I, I guess it's not such a universal that I know what makes me happy and I choose not to do those things. Like, that's not true all the time. It's just that when I'm not happy, that is always the case. It's literally always the case that I'm not happy because I am choosing things that aren't going to make me happy. Right? But there is, you know, I've, like I said, and I could go on for a longer time about this, but it's like, it's made me really reframe how I think of happiness. Um, what do I actually need? I think a lot of what I used to crave was excitement. And I still crave that in a lot of ways. Um, but real lasting happiness is a, is a sense of I am okay and I will be okay literally no matter what my circumstances throw at me. Even if uh, temporarily my emotions are not the best. Universally, I have a level of okayness that you cannot even touch. Because it's made of the material on Captain America's shield. I almost said Iron Man. Ooh, but I gotten destroyed by losers in their mom's basement. <laughs>